now to travel and we are heading to Fiordland National Park and a guided walk that's popular with New Zealanders as well as overseas visitors. Debbie is back in the Harvey Norman Lounge. Good morning. Good morning. Well, Hollyford Track follows the trail left by a glacier 10,000 years ago. So we went from mountains to the ocean. Take a look. It's been awarded World Heritage status by UNESCO. It's about the size of Israel. Fiordland National Park is an absolute gem and this guided walk of Hollyford Track ensures you see some of the best bits. We're learning bushcraft along the way. Think of it as Survival 101. Yeah, we uh, look at all sorts of different plants. So uh, everything from uh, having a look at medicinal purposes that plants can uh, be good for. Uh, to what you can eat out there in the bush. Uh, a lot of people call it the fiddlehead or the, the koru uh, of the hard tree fern. Make sure you get the hard tree fern, not the soft tree fern, <laughs> because uh, that won't be so good to eat. Uh, but the hard tree fern, uh, yeah, just the korus, you can unfurl it and take out the little uh, caterpillar looking section uh, and you can eat that and it tastes, uh, most people think it tastes fairly much like walnut and I think uh, that's what you found. We're walking through a classic U-shaped valley that was carved out by a massive glacier. The track becomes single file and the layers of green from the tiny ferns to the moss to the leaves to the canopy are simply stunning. We crisscross Hollyford River over suspension bridges, stopping often to admire the dramatic view and occasionally to refill our bottles. In a lot of countries and a lot of places, even in New Zealand, you can't just go and drink the water. And it's one of the best things. One, you're not carrying it. And two, it's always fresh and cold. Lunch is spent gazing at the majestic Darren Mountains before heading back into the bush, stopping at Hidden Falls and, of course, bird watching all the way. All the stoke trapping and the conservation that's happening um, over the last few years have brought a lot more bird life into the valley. Uh, from the smaller birds, uh, tomtits, uh, lots of the piwaka waka, the, the fantail there. Uh, the odd bush robin we see, and then tui, uh, a lot of bird song from the tui and the bellbird. We make it to Pike Lodge as it's getting dark. Brits Leanne and Reese love this social side of hosting. Um, we were surprised that actually it's Kiwis and New Zealanders that come on this trip, so they're the main uh, customer if you like. Um, but we get you know a lot of Europeans, Americans through but the diversity of the personalities and the stories they have and uh, that moment where you know I usually sit there and you know every night there's there's a character or there's a new conversation on the menu tonight venison medallions they make this look easy but our remote location means it takes a lot to get these ingredients here it's flown into the valley via helicopter it's jet boated up the river and then i um, run down to the confluence and uh, and me sometimes <laughs> and we carry it all up here um, so before it's even gone in the pan or in the oven there's a lot of hard work that's gone into it and a lot of backache i've got quite a lot of experience cooking but um reese is the boss in the kitchen and i'm kind of the boss everywhere else so next morning a short walk to catch the sun rising over lake alabaster easy to see why the guides love their jobs so much I guess I've got the best office uh, anyone could hope for, <laughs> being a guide, so uh, yeah, that's got to be one of them. Um, yeah, I can show people what there is and open their eyes to stuff that they'd uh, usually just walk past, you know, little un unassuming plant, and it can be one of the oldest plants in the world and have great significance, um, and people wouldn't know that. So making, uh, you know, instead of people walking from A to B and uh, looking with their heads down, uh, make people stop and look around and appreciate what's around them. Wow, so you learned a lot of the Hollyford track. Yeah, we really did. The guides are so passionate about what they do and where they are. So I'm not going to spoil it for you, though. I'm not going to tell you any of the stories that they told us, so you'll have to go and do it. And can anyone do the walk? Yeah, absolutely. Don't let age or experience put you off. On our group in particular, the youngest person was 22 and the oldest was 74. The 74-year-old was well in front of me. She was <laughs> amazing. So don't let that put you off. And Mush, our guide, was actually telling us that the youngest person she's taken was an eight-year-old and the oldest was an 86-year-old. Wow. So if you want to do it, go to their website for more information. You can depart from either Tiarnau or Queenstown. I recommend Tiarnau, then you get more of a sleep in in the morning and a later pick-up time. So the walks begin again in late October and they run until April. So now's a really good time to get in and book. Spaces do fill really fast. I just had a look and some of their days are full up already. Wow. So hugely popular with all experience levels and all fitness levels. I like that sleep-in tip too. That's yep. very, very important. <laughs> Thanks so much.
much, Debbie. Looking forward to seeing the second and third days of the Hollyford track next week. So what's actually in store for us? Well, days two and three, very different to day one that I've just shown you today. Jet boating and helicopters. That's all I'm going to say. It was amazing. It really combined all of those different aspects. Choppering through Milford Sound, can't beat it. So I'm going to show you that next week. Oh, that sounds amazing.